So you've decided that you pretty much love riding mountain bikes. You love actually getting out on mountain bike trails. You've already given things a good, honest start on a, what we would call, I guess, a starter hardtail. You're looking for a next step. You don't know, should I go full suspension or should I go hardtail? This guy here, if your budget doesn't allow you to step up into the sort of $2,000 plus Canadian price point, and you're still looking to get the best possible bike underneath you, and that's gonna be as far as both componentry and um, the bike's geometry and having those key things underneath you like drop or seat post, this is a darn fine argument for going the hardtail route. This is the 1599 Giant Fathom 2. I am going to show you the specifications on this bike. We're gonna talk about how it fits, its weight, and uh, pretty much the highlights of why this is 1599 bucks of awesomeness. So, to start with, this is the, um, the base of two different versions of the 25 and a half, 27.5 wheeled version of the Fathom. There are also two versions of a 29er Fathom. So there's four different Fathoms. Um, and so the Fathom 2, this is the sort of um, lower price point one. And then there's another one that is about 2000 bucks. So in the 27.5 version, this is the Fathom 2. Let's take a look at the details. So we have a Shimano Dior 1x12 drivetrain. This means that we have a gear range of 10 to 51 teeth on that cassette. Um, that is going to be as much of a gear range as you would expect on an old school 2x or 3x, but with the simplicity of operating all from your one shifter on your right hand and with uh, less likelihood of bouncing chains off of uh, front chain rings on the old multi front chain ring system. So this Dior 12 speed derailleur is a clutch derailleur. That clutch is a thing right here that in the off position we get a spring that moves fairly easily. When the clutch is on that is a much more pronounced spring. So that is one of the magic things on these higher quality one by drivetrains that Clutch being on means that you're able to ride through uh, bumpier terrain and the, the chain is just going to be bouncing around less, so it's less likely to bounce off of these front chain rings. The front chain ring adds up to your uh, ability to keep your chain on because that's a narrow wide chain ring. So those teeth, they change between narrow and wide profile um, and they're also a longer tooth profile than a chain ring that's designed for actually changing gears, like a bike that has a front derailleur. So we have a couple more things here that make this really good for off-road use. The rear end of this bike uses a through axle, so that means that your rear hub has a larger axle going through it and that axle actually helps to um, strengthen and stiffen the rear end of the bike somewhat. Tires on this guy, Maxxis Ardent Race, 27.5 by 2.6, and these are tubeless ready with XO casing, and they're actually set up tubeless. So we have added sealant to these, that's a tubeless valve. And the benefit of going tubeless means you can ride those um, bigger tires a little bit softer, which is going to smooth things out a little bit for you. Um, it's also gonna mean that your tires really grab the ground better than a a really hard, pumped up, narrower tire. So with a 2.6 inch wide tire like this, we still have room with this frame that if you down the road decided you wanted to put bigger tires on, I think you can get away with uh, getting a 2.8 on here. These rims are 30 millimeters wide internally. Um, so a 2.8 um, would just work. Um, you wouldn't be able to go with a three inch for a couple reasons, but partially because that rim width wouldn't be good enough, but a 30 mil rim internal width is really, really good for helping your tires to really perform well. And that 2.6 inch tire is probably sort of the perfect tire size for that 30 mil rim. We have Praxis Cadet cranks on here. We have 
room for two bottles. This down tube thing actually has three different bolts, so you'll be able to choose where to put your bottle. If you want your bottle to collect the cow poo as you're riding along, you can even put one on the bottom of your down tube. This is the one place that you actually see some um, giant logoing in a subtle way, so if you're jumping over somebody's head and they're taking a picture of you, they'll be able to get a nice uh, picture of that logo. We have a quick release. We also do have a dropper post on this bike. So this $15.99 is pretty much the first price point that we're going to start seeing a dropper post on a bike. Um, this is a size medium that we're looking at and that is a 125 millimeter long dropper. Another highlight, we've got dropper, through axle, awesome tires, good rims, great derailleur, good cranks, chain ring. Another highlight is also this giant Crest 34 fork. So the highlight here is in many cases this exact price point is where you end up being in some other brands of bikes stuck mm -hmm. either getting a fork that's really tough but is about as supple as a brick or just not that tough. Um, Giant saw that their options for specking this bike were kind of limited and they wanted something light, tough with an air spring that was adjustable and so they basically just being the biggest bike manufacturer in the world they just made their own fork so this is the giant crest fork it's got a through axle it's got rebound adjust which is that red knob compression adjustment which is that guy there so that goes all the way up to a, um, pretty much almost a lockout with some in-between settings and then that is your air cap that's where you can change the air pressure to suit your rider weight we have either a 40 or 50 millimeter long stem depending on the size 40 mil in small and medium 50 mil in a large or extra large and that's with a 35 millimeter clamp area and 35 millimeter bars so that shows that um, they're designing this bike to be ridden hard like you typically only see 35 mil stuff on aggressive trail bikes Got some Tektro hydraulic discs on here. There's our 12-speed Dior shifter. There's my least favorite grips in the world because they just are too fat and mushy for my hands. Um, that would be, I mean, I have very little criticism of this bike. I think for 1600 bucks, they did such an amazing job. Um, if I was buying this bike, I'd replace those grips with a nice lock-on grip and I would put pedals on because I find it really hard to stick my toe in that hole and hold on. Seriously though, these bikes don't come with uh, pedals. This is kind of the start of the price points that pedals are no longer included with bikes because they know that uh, people have preferences. They want to pick the exact pedal they want and not be stuck with one that's kind of an okay pedal. There's our dropper remote there, so a nice one by style dropper remote. It's using the giant Romero saddle that is a big improvement in my mind over previous giant saddles. It's actually got a decent shape and enough padding to offer some comfort. Um, we have, I believe this is 180 rotors front and rear on this guy. Uh, yeah, I see a 180 on there. There's a little bit more details about how that fork works. Our Ardent Race tire. This tire is going to be a quite a good fast rolling tire. It's not the most aggressive thing in the world. So if you um, do have mud that you're riding in um, or just harsher terrain, the Ardent is a wicked fast hard pack sort of a tire. Um, but it's going to be a great start for you, this tire, I think. Down the road, you've got a perfect, uh, there's a lot of different 2.6 inch wide tires out there as options. So uh, you'll be doing just fine for uh, being able to pick a high performance tire down the road. So, geometry wise on this guy, um, I think the numbers are bang on what I would design if you were telling me make a hardcore bike in this price point for an intermediate level rider who is looking to take things more seriously. Um, we have a 75 degree seat tube angle, so that is the angle that that guy there is. 
and a 66 degree head tube angle. So 66 degrees is slack enough that you help um, to not feel like you're going to be pitched over the handlebars, but not so slack that it's going to take sort of a new riding style. Um, this will help you transition from maybe the bike that you learned how to ride on into sort of starting to develop the riding style that takes advantage of a slacker head tube angle. Um, weight on this guy is very impressive. Oh, I didn't mention that. It's a 130 millimeter long fork, so that crest that we talked about. 130 mil travel, and I am calling this bike an aggressive trail bike for being a hard tail. Um, and that suits that really well. Um, other measurements here, 470 millimeter reach on a large or 490 reach on an XL. Um, I'm six foot one and I would consider myself to be right on the cusp where I could go either way, depending on if I wanted a more stable bike, I would go XL. If I thought that I would be going to the local pump track or wanting a really nimble bike, I would be going with a size large. So XL, six foot one to six foot four, large 510 to 61 medium 57 to 510 and a small from about 53 up to 57 i think is a reasonable um, way to consider sizing on this guy um, i was going to tell you the weight i'm looking for that 28.5 pounds so other options that we're going to see in this sort of category that are super rad options too are things like the rocky mountain growler uh, the Growler 40, I believe, is just under two grand. It is going to be much more of a sort of heavier weight, um, longer, um, even more aggressive, aggressive trail bike on maybe one of the most aggressively um, designed bikes out there. So that one and the Growler is a 27 or a 29 inch wheel. So it becomes a bike that if a lot of your riding is on steep descents and you really are into the gnarly stuff. The Growler works well, uh, but not exactly a flippable bike, flickable bike. Um, on the other end of the spectrum, this would compare quite similarly to a Marin San Quentin 2. Um, and that's where we would have um, a more direct comparison. One of the things that this bike will have going for it in comparison to the San Quentin 2 is that extreme weight savings. Like I bet you were probably four pounds lighter on this than the San Quentin 2. The San Quentin 2 in exchange though, I think is probably going to be a tougher bike. So that extra weight comes um, to provide you with um, a more durable, tougher bike overall. Um, we'll look at some other details. So for a size medium, that's a really short head tube. They're trying to keep your standover height quite reasonable here. Um, so a short head tube, that helps to make up for the fact that even with a 130 millimeter long fork, we're still going to have a front end that um, doesn't sit up too high, which is going to help this in the flatter stuff or in the climbs um, and help it to feel quite nimble underneath you as opposed to your hands being out front of you, if that makes any sense. Um, the only, I mean, on the frame, one of the things that one of the guys pointed out is what if you wanted to put a rack or fenders on here? Well, they don't want you to. They think that this is a mountain bike, not a commuter bike, and they're pretty unapologetic about the frame design. So uh, you don't get any mounts on the back for rack or fenders. Um, I have never used rack or fenders on my bikes, so it's not a thing I even think about. What do you think? Is this the kind of content you're looking for in your local bicycle shops information YouTube channel? Do you like? Do you subscribe when you see something you like? I love this bike. I'm so impressed. When I saw the spec on this, I was really, really proud of Giant for pretty much like this is a, the A plus of price point um, bikes. And uh, I would not be surprised if we see some bike shop guys taking these and using them as the foundation for a pretty high end fancy build because to achieve that 28 and a half pound weight on this bike, it's got to be light. So. That is always fun if you can get something with trail-worthy geometry. 
that is really light yet still has through axles and stuff which helps to be strong. This is the 2021 Giant Fathom 2 in the 27.5 wheel version. Thanks for watching. Check us out if you're in uh, Alberta, Canada. Bike Bros is in Cochrane, Alberta. We are a giant dealer, of course. Marin, Rocky Mountain, and Pivot are our other brands. And uh, we love talking bikes and helping people get on the right bike. Bye.